In this video, we're gonna talk about the BKR 5000 radio and how it's used here in the wildland fire environment. So let's check it out. Well, it's wildfire season uh, again for 2024. One, well, it's Groundhog Day again. Once I switched my status to available, it did not take long at all to get put onto an assignment. And that is not surprising with, if you weren't tracking, there was record setting rainfall out west this spring, which just allowed for a whole bunch of new growth. Of course, they hit their normal drought status and all that new growth was just kind of dried out and ready to burn. As a country, we hit PL5 in July, which some years we don't ever get to PL5. And again, we hit that right at the end of July. So there was just a need for resources everywhere. You know, we're all about doing comm stuff on here. So this is gonna be a comms related video. So personally, I don't own any Bendex King radios, but when I get assigned to out west for a wildfire, I always look forward to get the chance to utilize, you know, whatever new tech BK has put out uh, because they really are like, the wildland firefighting radio period. So as you can probably appropriately imagine, the wildfire environment just entails some absolutely brutal conditions. And for as hard as I think as I am on my equipment and my radios back at home, I don't think anything compares to what the wildland firefighters put their radios and their equipment through all, all day long, every day. First off, environmental wise is the dust. It is just everywhere and it is this fine, particulate matter that literally gets into everything. And it's lovingly called moon dust by anybody that usually operates on these incidents. This stuff is so bad, you will see the operators of every piece of e equipment, every vehicle, every day, pulling out the air filters, banging them on things and just blowing them out. It's insane. Past that, there is the obvious smoke, sawdust, water from the rain, water from hoses, and then the drenching water if you happen to get caught in an air drought. So the radios themselves by the firefighting crews are usually worn in the pockets of their packs just to try to keep them out of the way. And this means that they're running their remote speaker mics up over their shoulder strap. Now, due to the distance and the way the packs are worn, because they're not worn like a backpack, they're worn kind of almost as more of like a butt pack because they're usually bent over working. This just means that the RSMs are pretty much stretched out all the times and the RSMs themselves are just under constant use and due to just being in a very exposed place, they just get the absolute crap beat out of them. And in addition to all of the abuse we just kind of talked about and the environment that they're in, these radios are on non-stop. I think the first thing that I notice every time I get issued one of these radios is their size. I mean, how can you not? Years prior, I've always had the Bendix King 5102s. Last year, for the first time, I was given a BKR 5000. And from going from the XTS 5000s and my XPR 7000s back at home and the, usually the you know 5102s from years prior, when I was handed this, I pretty much laughed and was like, what, what's the matter? Did they, did they run out of the big ones? Hey, <laughs> hey, why didn't you get the big one? <laughs> These hatches bottles in the heat. I, I don't even need a coat. I mean, these things are absolutely huge. This is taller, wider, thicker than any of my Apex or XTS series radios, which is certainly are all full-size radios. Beyond their size, I think one of the most recognizable things is pretty much specific to a wildfire radio is this orange battery that's attached to them. And this, the whole point of this orange battery pack is just to very easily identify and signal that this is not one of the normal rechargeable battery packs, but in fact, a clamshell that's filled with double A's, which we pretty much change out every day or every other day. Now, just real quick, but a really cool point of note for the history of the BK radios. If you weren't aware, these were actually developed with the ability of being able to be cloned from one radio to the next, primarily at a wildfire incident, and that was the forefront of their design. Being as how I and a lot of you out there are big Motorola fans, this is so foreign to us that it's hard to even fathom that this can be done so easily. 
And this is really what made me want to do a video talking about this because what an incredible radio. If you look at this and you go, well, I can just buy a cable and an adapter and you can literally clone these things radio to radio, which is what we do here and virtually at every fire you know, incident we respond to as each fire is assigned its own designated frequencies. For example, when I went down to communications with this one, the guy literally had a 5102 radio, hooked the cable up to it, and was able to put the code plug for this fire on this BKR 5000. And that's, again, as being all of us from Motorola backgrounds, it's just a mind-blowing feat of technological advancement that that's even possible. So a little, you know, getting into a little bit of the specifics about this, the BKR 5000, this is a single band unit, just like the Apex 6000. But there are a couple configurations of this radio that are out there. And this is one thing that the Apex series and the BKR 5000 radios actually share in common, that there are configurations of each. Now, this is the version 3.5 of the BK radio, but that would translate to Motorola world in the same of as an Apex. So 3.5 meaning that it has top controls, a top display, a front display, and a keypad. So getting into the displays a little bit, as we just said, this is the version 3.5. One thing of note about this top display is that the top display, it just simply takes the name of the channel from the front screen and converts it to the top screen. But this is not limited to the channel name. I know there is a menu of 18 different things to choose from in the RES or radio editing software. Um, the top screen can flip and be selected to be on a soft button of your choice on the Apex that screen is a separate field in and of itself in that the software, that the software, the CPS allows you to select what information is displayed independent of what is on the main screen. So keeping on with the top here, we have the clear secure button. Now, one of the coolest things about this is the fact that this radio has an ABCD zone selector switch, which is very convenient. The channel selector knob has no hard stop like the Apex does. Um, and it does allow you to essentially spin this indefinitely. Now, one thing with this channel selector knob, the fact that you can spin it indefinitely, yes, it allows you to put a bunch of channels into a zone. You're not limited to the 16 like in a Motorola. However, the way that I have kind of been traditionally brought up and the way that I like to have my radios programmed, I actually feel that this is a detriment to have that as a, as a capability. Um, so I'm really not a fan of this at all. Okay, so this does have pretty good noise cancellation, just like the Apex, and it accomplishes it in the exact same way by putting a microphone on the front and putting a mic on the back. Speaking of having the microphones on the front and the back, one thing that I'm actually not a fan about the Apex about is as much as I love the Apex radio, one thing that I'm not really a big fan of is the kind of disconjoint styling that it has. The fact that the screen and the keypad are on one side and your speakers on the other side just doesn't feel right to me. And in the you know law enforcement or tactical setting, it's usually not a big deal because the radio is always in a holster. You're always running it through a remote speaker mic, so you don't even really notice it. However, one thing that I think is kind of cool about these BKR 5000s is, again, being that these are you know kind of wildland, fire, born and bred, they kind of followed the traditional speaker, screen, keypad, with a thought process that guys are probably going to be wearing this in a chest harness. Now, the reason this is not in a chest harness it's because it is literally too big to. The 5102s would have been fine. They were kind of done that way. They worked great. I don't know if they're making bigger chest harnesses to accommodate these bigger radios, but that again is definitely a downfall. It's just the massive side of size of this. And again, although built with wildland fire in mind and everything kind of designed for that, not really practical to try to wear this thing on your chest because again, it doesn't even fit in this one. So yes, obviously I feel the size of this is definitely a negative. But one of the best things about this radio is that unlike the Apex series radios, you can scan however many channels or even zones you want to. And it is the simplest thing to do because all you're doing is just selecting through them and pushing the enter button right from the main screen. The Apex, not that way at all. And every update that my Apex gets sent to, I have to then go back and redo the complete scan list. And it is just a bit cumbersome to kind of fumble your way through all that, especially when you get one of these and you're comparing it to this. It has internal GPS and Bluetooth hardware, has AES-256, AES-128 encryption, also does advanced system keys. So definitely a solid radio. If you're kind of in the market and you're figuring out, hey, which one should I go with? It's going to be which environment you plan on working in. 
It also has to go with how familiar are you with the Motorola CPS software? Do you understand the kind of jumps and hurdles and everything else you have to go through to get that? As far as an end user easiness rating goes, this beats the Motorola, pretty virtually every Motorola radio out there, um, hands down. Again, the size is cumbersome, does have some shortcomings. I personally don't like that channel selector button. I'm fans of Motorola mainly, but it's really just gonna have to be up to you what you plan to do with it. If you've used one of these, if you have one of these, if you've compared it to a Motorola, if you've used both, let me know your experiences in the comments section. If I've missed anything that's important to get out there, please put that down in there. Guys, hope you like this video. We're out here. We're going to be doing some more. Be safe. We'll see you next time.